Hello, this is Sir. In today's practice lab, I will configure the following. First, I will configure basic ASA device and secure network management, and then configure DHCP and NAT on the ASA device, then uh, configure the ASA firewall to implement security policies, and then uh, configure a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN. I have already configured the interfaces on the routers and configured a static and default route. On the description of this video, you will find two files, one for the packet tracer source files and the walkthrough documents. If you want to know what had been configured on the device, just run the command show run and scroll through the configurations. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and share it on your Facebook page and give me the thumbs up. And please let me know if you have any suggestions, comments or questions. I will gladly answer you back. I will create new videos covering the changes to the Cisco exam with practice labs. These videos should help students pass the exam. Let me know if there are subjects you want me to cover. Here on this network, the internal network, we have the DMZ network and we have the external network and here we have a branch office network. I already configured the interfaces on the routers and also configured uh, the static route on the router so the devices can communicate. Now I will start configuring the ASA device on the headquarters HQ uh, ASA enable no password configured yet just hit enter and then configure terminal I'll give it a username admin1 with a password admin1 and then I'll give it the host name HQ ASA headquarters ASA now I will also configure enable password as of Cisco I will configure the domain name as the ccna.com then I will configure the inside outside and DMZ interfaces I will configure the domain name on the ASA device here simply domain name the ccna.com now I will configure the inside with the following information VLAN 1 with the IP address of 192.168.10.1 slash 24 name F or the name of the interface inside the security level will be 100 and will I, I will assign to the port E01 so here enter VLAN 1 IP address of uh, 192.168.10.1 with slash 24 submit mask and here no shut this is the interface here this is the uh, on the ether 01 this is the internal or inside uh, network and this is the network of 192.168.10.0 slash 24 or for this side of the network so now the name of the interface is inside security level of 100 for the internal uh, network and now for on the interface e01 switch port access vlan 1 and then no shut or enable the port. Now I will configure VLAN 2 with IP address of 209.165.200.253/28. Name if or the name of the interface outside. Security level for VLAN 2 is zero and assign it to the Ether 00. So now enter VLAN 2. IP address of for VLAN 2 on this interface here this is the IP address for this uh, 
uh, interface IP address of 209.165.200.1 uh 253 was slash 28255.255.255.240 enable the port with no shut now name of the interface name f is outside and the security level for vlan 2 is zero and now on the interface of ethernet zero zero the switch port access for VLAN 2. No shut. Now for VLAN 3, I will configure it with the IP address 192.168.21/24. The name of the interface will give it DMZ, security level of 70, and assign it to Ether 02. Now for Inter VLAN uh, 3. IP address of 192.168.20.1 slash 24 subnet mask enable the port now I need to know forward on the interface of VLAN 1 here let's type no shut the name of the interface DMZ and the security level as we said 70 now on the interface this interface here ether 02 e02 switch port access vlan 3 no shot now we can type this command show interface ip brief And here is how, what we configured so far. Show run. For the interface on VLAN 1 with this IP address. VLAN 2 with this IP address. And VLAN 3 with this IP address. Now, I will configure DHCP service on the ASA device for internal network. So, on the uh, HQ ASA, exit here, the command goes like this. DHCPD for the address, start the address with 192, we will be configuring the pool. 192.168.10.3. To 192.168.10.35 uh, for the inside inside network enter now the SCP service should provide the NS server this DNS server here uh, AAA and TP syslog server information so we will command will go like this the SCPD for the DNS uh, 192.168.10.10 uh, the IP address we want this to give the, uh, the, the DNS to be configured for the internal on this IP address 192.168.10.10 enter now for the default gateway, the SCP option three on the IP address of 192.168.10.1. This is the gateway on this IP address for the internal network. Now we will enable it, enable it for the inside uh, network, the SCP enable for the inside network now let's verify that the internal pcs pc0 and pc1 receive their ip addresses from the dhcp server so this pc0 
Go desktop, IP configuration, just click on the DHCP and it received the IP address 192.168.10.25 and the same with PC1. On the desktop, IP configuration, DHCP and it received this IP address. Next, I will configure secure network management for the ASA device. I will enable the ASA device as an NTP client to the AAA NTP syslog server, this server here. And I will enable the authentication to the NTP server and use the authentication key 1 with the password uh, corp key. So here on the server, if we click on the server, go to services and click on the NTP I already configured, enabled it and the key is 1 and the password of corp key and the NTP, the button here is turned on. So it's enabled key 1 with the password. So now to the, on the HQ ASA, back to it, uh, NTP, authenticate, now NTP authentication, key, as we said it's 1, MD5, and the key is corp, key. Now as for the server, NTP server, on the IP address here 10.10 192.168.10.10 and the key of 1 next <clears throat> I will configure AAA to use the local database for SSH connections to the console port so on the HQ ASA back to the, the ASA device command goes like this AAA authentication for the SSH console local uh, now I will generate an RSA key pair to support with modulus side of, size of uh, 1024 bits crypto key uh, generate RSA modulus it's 1024 bit the size of the key 1024 1024 bits enter and just type simply yes then I will configure HQ ASA to accept SSH connection only from the net admin workstation we want the ASA device to accept it from this guy here, the net admin PC. So back to the ASA, ASA device, SSH 192.168.10.5. This is the IP address, 192.168.10.5 for the net admin PC. And because just one device, so the subnet mask of 255.255.255.255 and it is in the inside network. Then I will configure SSH session timed out to be 20 minutes. SSH timeout 20. Next, <clears throat> I will configure NAT service for the HQASA device for both inside and DMZ networks. I will create an object, name it inside-nat with subnet of 192.168.10.0 for the internal and enable the IP host in the internal network to be dynamically translated to access that it uh, the, the external network via the outside interface. So back to the ASA device here. Command goes like this. Object, network, 
as we said we want to name it inside dash net the subnet of the internal network of 192.168.10.0 slash 24 subnet mask now we want to net from inside to out side dynamically on the interface now we are done with the internal then i will create an object call it dmz dns server to statically translate uh, the dns server in the dmz the dns server to translate this ip address to this public ip address statically so back to the asa the command goes like this object network uh, we will name it as we said dmz dash dns dash server and we want to the host that we want to Translate of 192.168.20.5 The DNS server here, this DNS server Not this IP address to this public IP address So the host of 192.168.20.5 Enter We want to NAT from DMZ to outside statically to 209.165 this IP address dot 200.242 enter next I will create an object and call it dmz-web-server this is the web server on the DMZ, this guy here. Uh, I will create an object called DMZ web server to statically translate the web server to public IP address. We want to translate this private to this public IP address. So back to the ASA device. Object, network, uh, DMZ, dash web dash server enter now the host we want to translate is on this IP address of 192.168.20.2 this is the host enter we want to add it the DMZ to the outside statically so this IP address 209.165.200.241 enter now <clears throat> uh, end here so I'll run this command show net just to have a, a look at what we configured so far as you can see here for DMZ to outside DMZ to outside this is for the DNS server, this is for the web server. This, these are statically and dynamically for the inside to the outside. And we have nothing been translated yet. Uh, next, I will configure ACL and firewall on the ASA device to implement the security policy. I will modify the default MPF, which stands for Modular Policy Framework Application Inspection to Global Service Policy to enable hosts in the internal network in the internal network to access the web server on the internet. First. I will create a class and I'll call it inspection default 
that matches the default inspection traffic. So back to the ASA device, configure terminal, class, map, <coughs> inspection, uh, default. Enter. We want this to match the default inspection traffic. Enter. Next, I will create a policy map. Call it a global policy and specify the inspect with the, the following protocols with DNS, FTP, HTTP, and ICMP. Now, policy. Uh, map global global policy the class is inspection default now we want to inspect DNS also inspect FTP and also inspect HTTP and finally inspect ICMP. Next, I will attach the policy map globally. Globally means to all interfaces. Now exit, service, policy, global, policy and we want it on all the interfaces global uh, it's, it's service policy global global Maybe I named it something uh, global. I typed it. You see, it is case sensitive. I typed it here, global. And I will go with this name just to show you that whatever you type, just be careful. I did a mistake here at typo. Here it's global. And here, when I tried to do it correctly, it didn't take it. Now, service policy global. Policy global. I'll show you that it will take it. You see, I did a typo here. The global, and it took it only global. It's just a, a mistake, and it didn't take it correctly. So whatever you type, just be careful. And it took it as a global policy. It doesn't matter. This is just a name. So it is configured. <clears throat> just be careful. <clears throat> Next. I will configure access control list to allow access to the DMZ servers from the internet. These are the servers of the DMZ. I will create an access control list to allow to be accessed from the internet. I will create, apply, and verify an extended, I'll name it uh, named access control list uh, outside dash to DMZ to filter incoming uh, traffic to the HQ ASA device. Now HTTP traffic is allowed to DMZ web server to this server. HTTP is allowed to this server here. So on the HQ ASA device uh, access list outside dash to DMZ extended. We want to permit TCP from any to the host. The host, this guy here, this server, the DMZ web server on the 
165.200.241 to the host uh, 209.165.200.241 equal on the port 80 which is for the HTTP enter now uh, DNS traffic both TCP and UDP is allowed to the DMZ DNS server to the server here on the 209.165.200.242 <clears throat> so the DNS traffic both TCP and UDP is allowed to the DMZ DNS server now I will create uh, two AC, uh, ACEs which stand for access control entries so we're still on the ASA device the command goes like this access dash list outside dash two DMZ extended permit TCP from any to the host of 209.165 the 200 that it's on the 242 242 uh, the port for the DNS equal to the number is uh, 53 enter now we said we wanted for both entries for the TCP and UDP just hit the upper arrow on the keyboard and go back to it's the same server just uh, changes from TCP to UDP UDP and it is on the same uh, port number 53 and the same server the same DNS server enter now FTP traffic from the branch admin from this guy here I move this FTP traffic from this PC the branch admin workstation is allowed to the DMZ web server it's allowed to this guy here to uh, the web server on the DMZ network so back to the ASA access list outside to DMZ extended permit TCP from host the IP address of the host of 172 the 16.40.10 172.16.40.10 to the host of the web server on 209.165.200.241 and on the port number 21 for FTP port 21 enter now we need to configure the interfaces for the incoming traffic so the command goes like this access group uh, outside to DMZ for inbound on the interface of the outside so we are implementing this here inbound coming from the internet inbound inbound on the interface outside interface not the inside interface outside interface this is how to read it now it's time uh, to verify the configuration we did so far uh, both the net admin this guy here net admin and the DMZ web server can access the website uh, this website 
uh, on the external network which is a website of external one dot com so on the net admin I will go to the web browser here and type the command external one dot com and we will see if our configuration has been correct and it's great and on the web server on the DMZ also we will type in the same command www external one.com and our configuration is correct so now uh, we have a branch admin can access the website this website on the DMZ this branch admin let's see if it can access it the ccna.com so branch admin on the web browser type www the ccna.com we'll give it a second this will tell us if our configuration is correct and it should be successful and it is <clears throat> Now let's see also the branch admin can establish an FTP connection to the web server on the ccna.com using the username Cisco and the password of Cisco. So on the branch admin workstation here on the command prompt simply type FTP on 209.165.200. 241 username of Cisco and password of Cisco and we are successful so our configuration is correct to quit just simply type quit and close it here now <clears throat> I will configure a site to site IPsec VPN between the X, uh, headquarter or HQ router here and the branch router here on the branch office. Now I will configure an access control list. I'll give it the number 110 on the HQ router to identify the interesting traffic the interesting traffic is all IP traffic between the two lands. The LAN of 209.165.200.240, this LAN here, and this LAN here. I already, on the HQ and the branch office, enabled the security package. To confirm, enable, just simply type show version. And as you can see here, the security has been enabled on the HQ router and on the branch router enable show version and here we go okay so now I'll start with the HQ router so anything we'll do on the HQ router we will just do the same on the branch uh, router HQ I'll take this a little bit. Uh, next, I'll configure uh, the access list. Configure terminal, access list, give it number 110. We want to permit IP 
from this network of 209.165.200.240 uh, to this network here. So the source of 209.165.200.240 with the inverse subnet mask of 0, 0, 0, 0015 to the network of 172.16.40.0 with the inverse subnet mask of 000 255. Enter. Now we configure the access list. Uh, list. Next, I will configure ISACAM phase one properties on the HQ router. The crypto, also the crypto ISACAM uh, for the crypto ISACAM policy is 10. So crypto ISACAM policy 10. Uh, encryption AES uh, 256 hash SHA authentication pre share Defi Hellman group 5 and the life, lifetime of 86. 8400 86400 enter now for the key crypto isa cam key of cisco i configure it on the hq router the same i will configure it on the branch router and on the address of 172 also the same key it will be on the address of 172 that's uh, on the network of uh, 16.172.16 on on this this interface of 20.2 20 dot 20.2 this is for the HQ router. So to communicate from the HQ router for the VPN tunnel to go to this network here on the branch office network, it will go through this interface on 172.16.20.2 slash, this is, yeah, slash 30. And to the branch office, it will be this interface of 10.1.1.1. This network to reach this network here, on the HQ router, it will go through this interface. <coughs> Next, I will configure ISACAM phase two properties on the HQ router using 10 as a sequence number. So, crypto IPsec transform set VPN dash set ESP AES uh, 256 ESP SHA HMAC. Now, as for the map, crypto map, we'll name it VPN map, give it number 10, IPsec ISACAM. As for the peer, on the HQ set peer of as I explained earlier, is this interface, 172.16.20.2. 172.16.20.2. Now, as for the PFS, which the, is stands for Perfect Forward Secrecy, set PFS group 5. No space between group and number five, enter. Now set security association, lifetime in seconds, 86, 400, enter. And the transform set of VPN set. Enter. And we want this to match 
the address, access control list, address of 110, as we configured earlier. Enter. Next, I will bind the VPN map, crypto map, to the outgoing interface. So exit from here. This is the outgoing interface on, of, uh, on the HQ router on the serial 000. Interface serial 000. Crypto map, we give it the name of VPN map. Enter. So now we are done with the, uh, the configuration on uh, the HQ router. I will do the configuration next on the branch router. I will configure IPsec parameters on the branch router using the same parameters as on the HQ router. I will make sure the interesting traffic is defined as the IP traffic from the two LANs. So, now on the branch, Uh, configure terminal access list give it the same number 110 we want to permit IP from the source now so 172 that 16 that uh, 40 that 0 with the inverse subnet mask of this to the destination of 209 165 that 200.240 with the inverse subnet mask of 00015. Enter. Next, I'll configure ISACAM phase 1 properties on the branch router. The crypto ISACAM policy is 10. So the command here goes like this crypto ISACAM policy 10, the same as we did with the HQ router. Uh, encryption AES uh, we give the same number 256 bits for the hash SHA authentication also pre shared Defi Holman group 5 and the lifetime as we configured it there it six four zero zero exit from here now for the key crypto isa camp key just the same what we configured on the hq router of cisco and to match the address this address here on this interface 10.1.1.1 10 10.1.1 .1 .1 .1. 10 .1 .1 .1. and then enter Next, I will configure ISACAM phase 2 properties on the HQ router, on the branch router, sorry, uh, using 10 as a sequence number. So, on the uh, branch router, uh, a crypto IPsec transform set VPN set ESP AES. 256 ESP SHA HMAC Enter Crypto Map VPN Map Number 10 IPsec ISA Camp Set the peer of 10.1.1.1 As for the PF uh, the PFS group 5, no space, set security association, lifetime in seconds, 86400, and now set transform set, VPN set, enter. And we want it to match the address 110, just like we, this is the uh, access control list. Next, I will bind the VPN map, a crypto map, to the outgoing. This is the outgoing interface on this interface of serial 000. So on the branch, exit from here. Uh, 
uh, interface serial zero 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 crypto map VPN map enter now I will verify the VPN configuration by conducting an FTP session with the username Cisco and the password Cisco from the branch admin here PC to the DMZ web server and on the branch router one I will check that the packets are encrypted by running the sumshow command so on the branch go to command prompt uh, username of Cisco password of Cisco and it's successful and to quit simply type quit so now <clears throat> on the net admin PC here or workstation and I will go to the web browser and type uh, www the ccna.com enter and as you can see it was also successful and our configuration is successful so I'll go here to the HQ and type this command exit from here and another exit uh, show crypto IPsec SA and as you can see it's showing us what been uh, packets encapsulation uh, in caps five packets encrypted packets digest so our work is has been and I'll, I'll run this uh, uh, again on the net admin as you can see here we have it five packets let's see if this will increase and let me run it again here on the branch uh, and from here show crypto isacam sa As you can see the destination, the source, the state, uh, the other show command show a crypto IPsec SA. Showing us packets here, encapsulated seven, encrypted seven. Let's see if this number will increase. Go here again and run the command or I'll do it again from here uh, the ccna.com and go back here we said the numbers were five packet 7 do run the command on this side show crypto ipsec sa and increase it to 7 so I hope you learned something from this video it's really very simple just download the packet tracer source files and uh, walk it through documents just uh, before before you start just run some show commands on the uh, nothing we configured everything on the asa device just on the routers just uh, run the show ip uh, or show run and this will tell you what, uh, how i configured the routes the static and the default routes on the routers and try to ping not the DMZ uh, network just from like the admin to the uh, 
to the external web server here and from between the routers and before you do the running just to study the devices and then follow the walkthrough it will take you step by step until the very end and as you can see everything all the configuration were successful thank you so much for watching as you know that uh, the exam for the Cisco has been changed I will be making videos with the new uh, Cisco exams if you have any suggestions just please write me and if you like the video please subscribe to my channel and give me the thumbs up and share this video on your Facebook page let others know about these videos uh, as you can see I hope the walkthrough is helping and the way how I'm uh, configuring and doing the explanation for this video are helping thank you so much for watching I'll see you on my next video have a nice day